Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm going to review these, the Nike Air Zoom Tempo Next Percent Flyies. There's a mouthful. First, I'm going to show a video of me running around Chicago in them, then I'm going to review them. Finally, I'm going to see if I can recommend them. I bought these shoes for two reasons. The first reason was I have the Nike Alpha Flies, -da, and the Invincible Run Flynets, -da. and I wanted to compare the performance of the three of them basically because uh, they all have Zoom X, then one adds a, a Zoom Air Pod, and then the next adds also a carbon plate. I want to compare all that, but I'll do that in a subsequent video. The real reason I bought these uh, shoes, and particularly in this particular version, was I was really interested in the Flyies concept, Nike's easy on and easy off, no lacing methodology. Uh, I judged some product design awards, and um, I'm always struck by how many people are looking at things for older people about getting eases, ease in and out of chairs, etc., etc., etc. So in this video, I'm going to see if the Flyies works. If you watch this channel regularly, you'll know I make running videos around Dublin and in particular around buildings or places that I think are interesting. And I was going to Chicago, so I thought I've just got the flies that come in and I'll find a place in Chicago that I think kind of matches the shoe and I'll run around there and see if I can make a video not around the corner from where I live. Uh, so uh, I went to Chicago. My orig original plan was to go to Anisha Kapoor's uh, Cloud Gate. Um, but it was it was limiting. I would have made a limited video. I took some really nice photos of it years ago, um, but it, it was limiting in the video. But then I went on the BP Millennium Bridge uh, between Millennium Park and I think Maggie Daly Park, all part of the, the, the Grant Park area, which the marathon starts and finishes in, as does the Abbott 5K. So I was interested in, in, in this. I think the bridge is fantastic. It's designed by Frank Gehry, the Canadian-American architect. I'm not getting into the argument of whether he's Canadian or he's American, uh, but he's the first architect to appear on The Simpsons. So he's pretty well known. Uh, and I think this was his first bridge. The marathon starts and runs under the bridge, but in this instance, it's early morning. It's a couple of days after the marathon, and I'm going out for just a gentle run along the bridge. So I uh, Hope you enjoyed the running video. My friend Liam hates it. <laughs> he doesn't hate it, but he tells me he always skips over it. So there's there's markers down below so you can skip over it uh, if this is not your thing. But uh, let's go for a run and see the shoes in action. Thank you. 
enjoyed the run across uh, the bridge. I, I certainly did. I love running across that bridge. Uh, but now let's put the shoe on the turntable and look at its specifications. I couldn't find on the Nike website what this shoe weighs, but this shoe is a US 13, an EU 47.5, a UK 12, a CM31, a BR46, and a CN310 in brackets 2.5. So there's a lot of sizes that Nike put on the shoe. It measures 295 millimeters long internally. And in this size, it weighs in the left shoe, 383 grams or 13.5 ounces. And in the right shoe, 378 grams or 13.35 ounces. I tried to find a stack height and the drop from Nike. I ended up in an endless uh, thing, but I think it was a bot called Floyd, a chat bot. And we said it would escalate my inquiry, but nothing happened. I got nothing back. And, but from looking around the internet, I've seen it says there's a 37 millimeter stack height and a 10 millimeter drop, which seems about right. Nike say this about the shoe. Nike Zoom X foam in the footbed delivers energy return as you move forward. A visible Zoom Air unit gives you responsive cushioning that puts that extra spring in your stride. The shoe's heel collapses when you step in, then snaps back into place. A lock and release mechanism secures the fit, eliminating the need to tie laces. Pull the loop near the tongue to tighten and release by pulling the loop near the toe. Let's review the shoe and see if what Nike says is true. This is the most translucent of all my shoes. Uh, I don't know if you can see through there, but you can actually see through and see the Nike logo inside. It's so translucent. I mean, I'll stick the stick of light in it and you get an idea of how visibly it lights up but yeah it's the most translucent shoe of any i've got and you can kind of see the mechanism in there and you can see it i'll show it this side so you can see i'll turn this thing off that there's there's pull straps here and here this is the lock so you pull that to tighten and you pull that to release you'll see me doing it in the in the running video right at the very start um it's super easy to take on and take off um, there's a thing here on the back saying step. I think there's a kind of wire frame through this and a little through here. It's totally breathable. It's the most breathable uh, front part of any shoe I've got. Obviously there's no laces. So there's, there's a single booty construction. It goes quite high up the, the forefoot here at the front of your ankle and it goes up quite high in order that it can, it can grip you when it, when it sort of locks. Um, there's quite a bit of padding in here because there's a lot of structure in here that's, that's tying the shoe up. Um, the heel ha is very uh, lightweight, but it's got this wire up the back and there's a bit of padding around the back, a bit more than you get on an alpha fly, but it's pretty, pretty padded. Um, and as I say, this goes in and out. That's how you sort of take it off. In fact, in the video, you don't see me taking off the shoe because uh, the bridge was very wet. <laughs> I like the color of them. I didn't want to ruin them by stepping all over them. You can flick this off really easily around the back of your uh, foot. You don't actually have to stand on this thing. So they're really easy to get on and off. And the liner inside is fixed, which you'd expect because in a shoe that you're, you can't tie down, you wouldn't want to, the, the liner slipping. So uh, yeah, there's a complicated upper in these, but it works. With a lot of shoes, the, the magic happens down in the, in the outsole and the midsole. Not so much this. This the, the star of this show is is the upper and and how the fly ease works. Down in the base, there's a lot of Zoom X uh, foam, very uh, squishy. Dare I say, comfortable to run on. And then you've got the the pods in the front and the forefoot. Uh, as I said, I'll make another video about the performance. But essentially, this shoe it's all about the upper. It's it's um it's got if you look at the bottom of it, this is in this colorway. Uh, the the outsole is is the same color, sort of gr light gray. Um, but it's got a pretty similar outsole to the Alpha Fly. It makes a similar kind of noise. I might do a test of that uh, someday. But it hasn't got outstanding grip or traction. It's got, you know, but it's pretty average. The shoe is comparatively heavy. Of the three shoes that I have here from Nike, it's the heaviest. I expected that in, or I expect in the uh, laced version, the non fly ease version of this shoe, it probably fits somewhere in between the Invincible Run Flyknit and the Alpha Fly. Um, but in this size, it's a bit uh, heavier. Nike says, or they recommend that you go a half size up. Now, usually with shoes, I'm easy going with sizing. I, I, can, I can kind of tolerate a little bit here or there. But because these don't have laces, I think it's really important that you get the sizing right. Now, although Nike said size half, size up, I went with the regular size I would use, a UK 12, US 13, um, and they fit fine. I can walk in them without tightening any of the straps. It gets very easy to walk in. Um, the locking system is like a light switch. It's either on or it's off. It's, it's, it's not a graduated uh, system. So that can be tricky and it's important that you get the right fit. So I think you should ideally try these in a store 
interesting there, interesting there weren't any in the nike uh, the nike flagship store in chicago but but anyway i think you should try them in a store or else if you order them online make sure there's a good returns policy nike have a great one on the members uh, section i like the design of this shoe i mean in the dark colors it's ungainly in the lighter colors it's just on the right side of funky um it's available in i said a dark and a dark blue and a black with a plain white base and it, it looks a bit clunky uh in this color and the white and pink uh version i think it's much more interesting this is uh <laughs> nike love the long colorways this is called burly volt dynamic turquoise iris whisper and black i'm not sure where they get the black maybe the logo uh, but that's, that's, the, that's the color it is uh, when you look at this shoe and then you look at this shoe and then you look at this shoe uh, and these three form a, a zoom x family uh, and, and at different speeds and all that but they form a, 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 a trio and uh, you kind of look at them and you think gosh the design guys working in brooks must be really tired of churning out the same shoe design every year the <laughs> They all look the same from the ghost to the glycerin. It's kind of like the same shoe. They must scratch their head for colorways every year or something to make them interesting. No wonder they sell them with like beer things all over them and very strange colors. There's nothing else. They don't change the form very much, but Nike, they're having a real go. In terms of the running uh, feel, when I ran in on the on the bridge in Chicago, they felt fine. Usually when I'm filming, uh, I'm not really paying too much attention to how the shoe feels. I'm trying to not fall over and looking at the various angles and all that sort of stuff. Um, I then went out for a short run here a few days ago and they felt fine, but there was a bit on, on my right shoe only. It was a bit, uh, there's a sort of metal thing under here that was digging into my foot slightly. And in both shoes, after a while, I felt it tightness down down the base which is where if i'm uncomfortable in a shoe i always get uncomfortable um so i hadn't planned on running far anyway because um it was post-marathon and all that so I, I i basically decided to walk home and in part because i think a lot of people have been asking about walking shoes and they felt great walking i mean they really did feel really nice and then i picked it up a bit ran at the end i didn't feel any discomfort at all so i think that how you tighten them and the size you pick is really critical to how you're going to feel when you're in the shoe the shoe has fairly average grip and traction, not bad, not great. In the running video, I'm running tentatively because uh, I'm not trying to run fast. It's post-marathon uh, a couple of days after. And then also uh, the bridge was quite slippery on, on the sort of boardwalk uh, construction uh, because there was a dawn dew on the bridge. And uh, so I was fairly tentative, but the shoe's grip and traction is pretty average. I'm interested in, in the shoe. I was also gonna try the other uh, lace version, but um, I haven't yet. But these are designed for tempo days and i think chapeau to nike for putting this flyy system into one of their relatively fast shoes it's not in the vapor fly and it's not in the alpha fly but i guess this is their next fastest shoe um it's available in a different kind of methodology down in, in the pegasus uh their sort of everyday shoe but yeah it, it's good that this is in a fast running shoe and as i said i'll do the performance in another video the shoe costs 199 euro 99 cent uh, 200 US dollars, 179 pounds, 95 sterling, or 270 Australian dollars. It's not a cheap shoe and it's probably expensive for a tempo uh, shoe. And it's the same price in both the laced and, and the fly ease version. Um, but for the fly ease system, I think it's probably reasonable value. At the start, I asked, does fly ease work? And yes, it does. These shoes are very easy to put on and take off and um, if you're not tightening for, for running and you're walking about, you can do it without any hands. If you have further restricted movement in your hands, Nike do make a version called Go Ease, but I think that has sold out, but that's totally, you don't need any hands to put that on or off. So again, congratulations Nike for, for trying to make uh, more accessible shoes for people. And yes, Fly Ease works. Should you buy this shoe? Well, if you're gonna go running and you have full use of your hands, then no. Buy the regular version, it's the same price, it's probably a bit lighter, and there's more flexibility in the lacing options. If, however, you have restricted movement or have difficulty tying shoelaces, then yes, you can buy this shoe in confidence. The Fly Ease genuinely works. For me, I'm not gonna return these shoes. I'm not gonna go air zooming in them. No, I'm gonna go air porting. <laughs> They're great for travel. Uh, tramping through the terminals, ventilation in the air on the plane, uh, slipping them on and off in security, uh, running on a treadmill when I get to my destination, or wearing them in a design meeting where I'll fit right in.
time to plan another trip. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it'd be great if you'd hit the like button. There'll be lots of stuff in the description below. And as always, I'll happily answer any questions that you put into the comments. There'll be a blue subscribe button popping up there and some related videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.